Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Prayer, Standing in the Gap. It is October the 28th, Wednesday, hump day. Hope you are um, having a great week. And again, I'm so grateful for so many of the, you that have made the decision each day to join us and pray and try to stand in the gap for our country, for leaders during this crazy election process, uh, the whole Supreme Court process, all that... Um, uh, all that our country is going through and all that we are dealing with as a, as a nation. And so, again, good morning and thank you for joining us. want to um, run through our three verses that we have continued to read each day to help maintain our mindset and our focus and um, trying to, while we believe very strongly that, um, that God has called us and, and that there is an agenda, if you will, that uh, we are trying to bring God's truth into every situation. Uh, we also recognize that that uh, conversation, being gracious, and the way we do things um, is really, really vital. And so we've been reading through these verses. And if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. We're glad you're here. But um, Psalm 51.10, <clears throat> create in me a clean heart, God, before I start trying to clean up everybody else. Um Create a clean heart in me, O oh God, and renew a loyal spirit within me. Romans 12 and 18, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And Colossians 4 and 6, let your conversations be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. Boy, we're going to kind of focus on that one just a little bit there. Um, I read a quote from uh, Casey Stingle, who's a manager of the New York Yankees baseball team. The quote says, it's easy to get good players. Getting them to play together is the hard part. Um, and boy, isn't that true? Each one of us faces that particular issue. How do I blend my agenda, talents, and abilities with those that are around me that either I work with or with those in my family or sort of my sphere of influence? How do I cooperate with others to reach the goal? And I was thinking about that in our leaders uh, this morning. Jen and I, my wife and I went to, to dinner the other night and the restaurant that we were in just happened to have on TV, uh, a local, local TV, Lakefront TV. And it had one of our, um, one of our local uh, government meetings was on the TV and uh, noticed uh, one of the guys that, that we know that we're friends with and and uh, Jim was like, man, he, he looks nervous. And I said, why does he look nervous? She said his knees bouncing up and down because they just had a table and you could see his knee just bouncing up and down as he was listening. And I looked at it and I was like, no, he ain't, he ain't nervous, he's mad. And um, so strangely enough, the very next day he called me about something completely different and I said, we saw you on TV last night. And, uh, and he went, uh-oh. And I was like, no. And so I told him the story. He goes, oh, no, listen, if my knee is bouncing up and down, I am agitated. And uh, that kind of stirred me thinking about this morning. Um, we can take leaders and we can dehumanize them. Uh, we can make them, you know, these individuals that are kind of doing their thing um, up here. And we can be very, very critical uh, but, you know, they got to go home and be dad. They got to go home and be a husband or they got to go home and be a wife or, <clears throat> you know, wash the dishes, uh, uh, take out the garbage. And and so, you know, how hard is it to have an agenda, to have an idea of what you think is right, and yet to be in, especially today, in the culture we're in that is so polarized and so um, at war with one another. And so I thought this morning that we would pray specifically for leaders, and maybe God will bring to mind specific leaders for you to pray for, um, and, and not that we would pray against their selfishness. Be careful of that, because that'll be the tendency, I think, in our heart today, would be to immediately go to the other side of the aisle and say, won't they stop being selfish and compromise or whatever, blah, blah. And it's not that as much as um, just that we would learn the, the art of compromise, because really, I think politics and that whole realm is, is exactly what it is. Where where is where is the line of truth and trying to accomplish? And yet we're built upon a system that has two parties and three branches of government. So I think on purpose, because they balance. This one might get extreme and this one pulls it back towards the middle. And this one gets extreme and it pulls it back towards the middle. So um 
brought up a, a couple of verses that, that kind of can stir us and maybe the Holy Spirit can begin to speak to you about how to pray for whom. Um, but Philippians 2, 3, and 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interests of others. And so Jesus wants us to model unselfishness. He, he wants us to model this, this reality. And I was, I was thinking about for our leaders, like if we, if we don't dehumanize them, if we really realize they're human beings with hurts and feelings and emotions and all, how hard it is to balance this concept of unselfishness. Um, because you have what you know is right, like the numbers add up and this is right and this is the way we should do this. But then you have the other side of the aisle uh, and, the, and the other side of that struggle. Like how, how hard is that? How hard is that to uh, to not just manipulate, lie, steal, cheat, control, you know, things that, that aren't healthy. And as a matter of fact, um, uh, Galatians 5 and 15 says this, if you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. And um, so I found a, another quick story that I thought was really cool. Just again, trying to prime the pump for you this morning in the way to pray for and the Holy Spirit will give you who. But um, I read this story. During the 1964 Olympics in the two-man bo bobsled competition, a British team driver uh, driven by Tony Nash, the British team was driven by Tony Nash, had just completed its first run and was in second place when they made the most disheartening discovery. They had broken a bolt on their real axle of their sled, which would put them completely out of the competition. The great Italian bobsled driver Eugenio Monti, who was in first place, heard of their plight. He removed the bolt from the rear of his own sled and sent it to them. The British team placed it on their sled and then raced down the mountain winning the gold medal. Monty's Italian team ended up in third, took the bronze. And when asked about his act of sportsmanship, Eugenio Monti replied, Tony Nash did not win because I gave him a bolt. Tony Nash won because he was the best driver. And because of his unselfishness, Monty was given the first de Coubertin medal for sportsmanship. The award named after the founder of the modern Olympics is one of the highest honors an Olympian can receive. So just, man, as I read that, I thought about, you know, God honors unselfishness and, and we've got to learn to do a better job of working together. That's, that's an obvious. And for some of us, I think probably when we look at politics, we may have given up on that a little bit. We may have just been like, you know, we're just at war. Or we're just at odds. Uh, but I just, I believe God is a big God. I believe my God can change the hearts of men and women and that um, he can he can take someone who may be completely arrogant or and seem that they are on their own agenda and, and have their own way and turn their heart. And so let's pray in that way this morning. And so as you think about local and, and state and federal officials, and again, be careful that you don't get um, weird with it. And when I say weird with it, I mean, you know, if you're a Republican, you immediately start looking at the Democrats and going, okay, God, let them stop being selfish and blah, blah, blah. If you're a Democrat, you look at the Republican, let them stop. Instead of that, um, let's not dehumanize our leaders. Let's understand they're just as human and have emotions and families and responsibilities and things just like us. And so let's pray some real uh, heartfelt prayers this morning that God would give them grace uh, that God would give them the, the wisdom of Solomon. They've got some crazy decisions to try to make and and um, negotiations to go back and forth on and decide. And so whether it is, you know, immigration or health care or, you know, abortion or what, I mean, these issues that are so divisive, so intense, uh, let's not dehumanize, uh, dehumanize our leaders, but let's pray for them and, and ask God that, that God would... Um, change their hearts away from maybe the advisors or people that are speaking in their ear on how they might manipulate, control, slash win to a heart of what is what is right, what is the greater good, what is it that, that would be the best for all people, or a remembrance that we have a representative government, that, that they actually represent the heart of the people where they come from. 
Um, but again, uh, be very, very careful. That's why we pray our prayers, you know, created me a clean heart first, right? And that I'm gracious in it. That So be careful about your prayers that it doesn't turn into a, um, a, uh, a, a partisan prayer, <laughs> if you will. Uh, but understanding the, the, the pressure of what that is and how much we appreciate that our leaders do put themselves in those situations and in that, that pressure cooker this morning. So hope that kind of prompts the pump. Maybe the Holy Spirit will give you specific people uh, to pray for. But let me, let me pray in that way, and then I'll uh, get off and let you spend some time um, just uh, standing before God today and standing in the gap for our leaders. So, Father, thank you for... Uh, one, the reminder this morning that our leaders are, are just as human as us. Emotions and frustrations and, um, you know, what is it like to be a, a congressman and then to go home at night and have a teenager that you're dealing with, you know, or struggles of, of marriage or financial things. And so, uh, God, we're, we want to first stop and say we're thankful for all of our leaders um, and even and especially those that are, quote, on the other side of the aisle from us, um, as they are serving and doing what they believe is best in the moment. But we're praying, God, for a spirit of cooperation and a spirit of unselfishness uh, that is based upon your truth and your wisdom. So would you give truth and wisdom to our leaders? Your truth, not not a not not a false truth and not a false gospel, but um, God, I can't imagine the the frustration on a on a daily basis, the constant back and forth of negotiation, and um, and so, man, would you give them a diligence? Uh, would you would you give them peace, a, a peace in their heart that settles them? How easy it must be on a regular basis to get angry, and and to and to lose their temper because of that constant back and forth. And so would you give your grace to each one of our leaders at a, at a local level? We're thankful for those that are serving us here in Leesburg, Lake County, the surrounding area, Central Florida. We're grateful, God, for those that are on the state level and, and serving in that way and, and then in our federal government. Through this process, God, over, over the next, especially the next week, we pray that you would do something absolutely miraculous in the hearts of leaders that would bring about a sense of unity, a sense of cooperation, a sense of focus on the greater good of all people based upon your truth and based upon your will for our nation. And so God, we, we thank you for each one of our leaders. Help us to love, especially those who are on the completely opposite side uh, politically than us. And, and um, God, we, we thank you again for their service. Bless them today, their families, their marriages, their kids today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, guys, thanks again for joining. Take a little time now, and as the Holy Spirit leads you, pray for particular leaders, wisdom, truth, and unity and cooperation. Have a great day.